Yeah. Bitch, I'm running the meat. Yeah. Try yeah. shit on the eyes, they gon' fuck up a beat. They won't let me sweep it, drop shit out the G. What up, y'all? It's your boy, Doughboy, man. I'm back with another one, but yo. It's crazy, y'all. It's crazy, y'all. So, Drippo out of 37th. You know, 37th got all the rappers, man. No Savage, Jamo, all them. But, yo, basically, his funeral got shot up, man. A mass shooting, man. Broad day, man. Four people shot, one dead, man. And if y'all know, Drippo died about, like, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, man. They just had his funeral about two days ago, man. And they shot that mug up, man. They shot it up, man. And it's crazy because Dr Drippo got a song called Kill Mo News. And he ended up on Kill Mo News, man. So, y'all, watch what you speak into existence, man. Watch what you speak into existence, man. This is the scene, man. I guess they burned the car up, man, because I guess he died trying to slide on Simple City, man. And he died trying to slide in his own man. They left him, and they burned the car up for evidence, man. So, yo, stay out the streets, man. But stay tuned, man. I got some more coming up. After a shooting outside a funeral in D.C., you heard that correct. The service was for the victim of another deadly shooting. Yeah, and tonight, D.C. police believe the shooter targeted the victims, but we're still working to learn why. Investigators say the gunfire started just before 1 o'clock this afternoon outside Stewart Funeral Home. And tonight, we've got two crews near the scene on Benning Road to bring you team coverage. Yeah, John Henry and Delia Gonzalez are covering the police, uh, covering the police investigation and community reaction. But, John, we I want to start with you for the latest down from police. What are they telling you? Well, guys, we can tell you that this scene cleared about two hours ago, right in front of this funeral home where that shooting took place. This uh, attracted a lot of attention here in the neighborhood with a lot of questions. Chief among them, why would anyone ever shoot at a funeral? Ray Williams was just working to keep this neighborhood looking nice. Well, that was cleaning up in the pocket last. That's when gunfire rang out one block away. I heard about eight shots. Talk for shooting at 4001 Benny Road Northeast. In front of Stewart Funeral Home. Yeah, I see a few running down this way. Uh, medic 7, Medic 10, and Medic 21. I see the police running through the pocket line. Four people shot. Chief Robert Conti said it happened right in front of Stewart's funerals, the intersection of 40th Place and Benning Northeast. A funeral had just let out around 1217. Uh, people were milling about uh, when the shooting happened. Conti said an MPD officer happened to be in the area at the request of the family inside. Very close to where you guys are standing. As the funeral was for 24-year-old Stefan Carroll. Homicide victim in the latter part of March. Still, the officer's presence was not enough to keep the peace male, adult male, is deceased. It appears that several of the people who were in the block were specifically targeted. We're unsure why that is. We're unsure why these people were targeted, more or less why they were targeted at a funeral. Uh, we don't understand that. I mean, how low can you be of a human being to target other people at a funeral? People who do these types of crimes, I mean, they need to be ultimately held accountable for their actions. Now, there was another shooting around the same time this shooting occurred about five minutes away from here in Southeast, but police tell us it does not appear that that incident was related to this one. Lorenzo? Yeah, this is sad on so many levels. First, you're at a funeral for a young man who was killed not too long ago, and then someone else is killed at this funeral. John, thank you so much. You know, this senseless act of violence is having a huge impact on the surrounding community. Our Delia Gonzalez spent the afternoon listening to people who don't just get to hear about these events around town. They live it mm -hmm. because it's happening in their neighborhoods. And she joins us now live with the latest. And Delia, they are just ravaged yet again. You're right. They say this happens far too often. They feel like they're living in a war zone, love this community deeply, want to stay. But we talked to a homeowner who's really um, troubled and torn about whether or not it's still safe to stay here, a home that her grandmother owned and she wants to keep in the family. But let me tell you right now, just set the scene. We are here in the back end of the funeral home. You can see police tape is still up. An awful reminder of what happened for a lot of the folks who are just coming home this evening from work. This is the parking lot where neighbors tell us after the gunfire erupted, lots of folks spilled out into this parking lot looking for safety. And the neighbors who live down in this alley in this neighborhood say the gunfire was so loud it sounded like an explosion. There was fear. I heard like a cannon, boom, boom, boom. There was resolve. We do have to lean in on faith. And a call for unity. Our city needs prayer. 
The homeowner, the business leader, the community activist, a community torn apart by street violence, now in utter shock after a funeral ends in gunfire. She was saying it was fireworks. It were people running away from the funeral home. They said it was a lot of kids, just a lot of adults just running into a parking lot. Police say the family of 24 year old murder victim Stefan Carroll requested police presence for his service at Stewart's funeral home on Benning Road. But somehow the shooter still got through the four officers on the scene, killing one and injuring three others. It definitely feels like a war zone living in this community. We know the struggles that our community have, but we can't give up in these moments. This is the time to lean in. This is the time to say, OK, we have to have accountability. We've been hearing a lot about and a lot of folks from the city, um, city leaders saying we need more collaboration. This is what we need, but right. it, it seems like we, we haven't gotten there yet. Well, this is a title driven city. And if you don't have the right title, you're not, your solutions will not be respected. Community activist Jay Brown says we all need to work together to attack this ongoing violence as he joined hands with the police chief and other city leaders to pray for peace, to pray for solutions. And we end on that powerful picture of the police chief holding hands with other community leaders and activists in this parking lot praying for peace because so many people tonight are indeed doing that. I just uh, reached out to another community activist who is working with the family who was inside this funeral mourning the loss of their loved one. She says this violence is out of control. Tonight she's asking the community to pray for this family. Leslie, Zoe, back to you. One of the things that Delia, you keep hearing and we keep hearing is that, that no one entity can do this alone, mm -hmm. right? The community can't do it yeah. alone. The activists can't do it alone. The police can't do it alone. That folks are gonna have to really come together yeah. to decide that this has to stop. Yeah. yeah. All right, All right Delia. Thank you. And you can expect more from WUSA 9 on this shooting and the bank robbery in Arlington. For updates anytime, download the WUSA 9 app. You can stream us for free on WUSA 9. Two women, Fox 5 Sierra Fox live in Northwest DC tonight with new details. Sierra? Good evening to you both, Angie and Jim. We just got new information. D.C. police confirmed that the man who was shot and killed outside a funeral home is 29-year-old Terrell Coghill. And take a look at your screen. This is the suspect's vehicle investigators are looking for. It's a white Lexus that may have a damaged front passenger side door. Multiple sources tell Fox 5 that a lot of the violence happening here in our nation's capital is stemming from beef between different neighborhoods. Why? Well, social media and drill rap. I spoke with a gang expert to explain. Tonight, a man is dead and three others are hurt after a shooting outside Stewart Funeral Home near 40th Street and Benning Road in Northeast D.C. While police have not confirmed whether or not this was gang related, Fox 5 sources and people in the community believe this continues to be the problem. Why are people killing each other over social media and drill rap? Well, because what happens is it's called... Uh, respect. So what happens is when you disrespect somebody on social media or, you know, we call that social media gang banging or through a rap song, then you must respond to it. If you don't respond to it, then you're going to be looked upon as weak. Authorities confirmed the funeral was for 24-year-old Stefan Carroll, who was shot and killed in Southeast D.C. back in March. A community activist says Carroll was a rapper involved in gangs. Robert Freeman is a gang expert based in Los Angeles, California, who says there are no rules anymore, and that's why the disrespect went to a funeral home. Now, it's, it, it doesn't matter. They're going to come get you when they want to come get you. And, and they get to brag, brag about it. So that's what this is all about. Fox Fag Gang, Nick. Fuck Fox Fag Gang, Nick.
Watch out, get on that cop. They shoot from the gashes, they won't make it fall. He got hit by a test, or he won't see the mob. Drag it to blow him to the mud to the stop. You ain't put that 50 ball in that P. I fuck with some Migos, but we don't know Lee. That nigga ain't sleep, but we put him in sheep. Ain't But I don't know how far they gonna go behind him. Like, but anyway, these niggas, bruh, four in the week is crazy to me. Bruh, four in the week is crazy to murder. I ain't gonna cap. Four niggas in a week. I lost four niggas in four years. I ain't gonna cap. I ain't never lost four in a week. That's different. But look, though, 